By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are still in Italy at the Prosecco Cup, but now we are at day two, the day two tournament. And uh, I mean, this was so much fun. This was just a really, really cool event. So after the main tournament on day one, the Venetia Alliance organized a day two tournament where you bring your flavor deck to the table. So all the power cards are restricted and the whole philosophy is you bring the deck that you love, you play the cards that you love, and you let your opponent do his thing, you do your thing, and then let's see whoever does the coolest thing, you know, and it doesn't really matter who's going to win or not. So it's just a really nice opportunity to bring like a fun deck, you know, to bring your kobolds to the, to the table, to bring, well, in this case, my opponent here, uh, Tommaso Allegri, is bringing a mono blue deck with all the boats in Magic the Gathering, in the art, in blue at least. As far as I know, you know, maybe I'm missing some, but as far as I know, he's putting all the old school boats in here. Um, so I'm just really looking forward to show you his deck photo. It's really cool. Um, and I'm playing with my uh, Flying Elementals deck. So it's a deck built around Flying Carpet and Gravity Sphere. A deck that's not really good, but just a lot of fun to play. Like putting an Earth Elemental on a Flying Carpet, it's just a lot of fun. Or maybe even a Colossus of Sardia. Those are the kind of things that you want to do. But usually in a normal, you know, tournament, you just get crushed so hard that you don't want to bring such a deck to a normal event. But for the day two, it's actually quite good so it, it was just a lot of fun uh before i jump into the deck deck stove first a quick message from our sponsor 341 trading 341 Trading is one of Europe's leading Magic the Gathering retailers. Their online shop has a fantastic selection of high-end Magic cards, especially for vintage, legacy and, yes, yes, old-school Magic players. They now exclusively offer my community free, fully insured and fast worldwide shipping on all their high-end singles, full sets and out-of-print sealed products. They upload new cards every Wednesday and have weekly sale offers and reductions waiting just for you. Use my code TIMMY to get free worldwide shipping on your first order over $500 or euros have fun ordering those cards and thank you 341 trading for sponsoring this video okay and we are back and ready to jump into the deck decks but before i do a quick reminder that if you would uh, rather start with the game first check out the deck decks later i know some people prefer to do that the easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below because there you will find several timestamps one of the timestamps reads mtg games Click on there, it'll take you straight to the games. And in that same description below, you can also find a link to my Patreon page. That is patreon.com slash timmytalks. So if you enjoy the content that I make, please consider becoming a patron via patreon.com slash timmytalks. Okay, and now that you're fully informed, I'm going to start with the deck decks. I'm going to start with the deck of my opponent, and that is a Boat Tribal Mono Blue. Oh man, this is such a cool list. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of my opponent today, Tommaso. And I mean, this is such a beautiful deck, Boat Tribal. And the cool thing to note here is that Tommaso actually is a sailor. So he's on the boat most of the time in his life. So this deck really suits him. And uh, he was such a nice guy, very stylish guy as well, by the way. And um, I'm, I'm so thankful that I was able to play against him because he brought Merchant Ship to the tournament. And Merchant Ship, look at it. It is beautiful art. I love it. I just wish they made the card a little bit better. It's one blue to cast for an O2, which is kind of fine. I guess they could have made a 1-1 one, one in my opinion, but okay, make it an O2. It's a merchant, so it doesn't have any power. I get that. Um, but then it says merchant ship can't attack unless the vending player controls an island. I think that's my main thing. I wish they would have just given it island walk instead of island home, and that's it, right? And then it says whenever merchant ship attacks and isn't blocked, you gain two life. When you control no islands, sacrifice merchant ship. So I think, again, with a few tweaks, this card would still be bad, but at least a little bit playable, right? Give it island walk, take away the when you control no islands, sacrifice the ship, take that stuff away. And whenever merchant ship attacks and isn't blocked, you gain two life, keep that in there. It's really cool to have some life gain going. Like then you have an O2 for blue. And if your opponent plays with islands, you can actually bring it in from the sideboard and you have some life gain going on. I kind of like that. And actually talking about this, this whole deck kind of needs your opponent to have islands. And that's why he's playing with four phantasmal terrains to change your lands into islands. And also he's playing with four magical hacks. Now the cool thing is magical hack can also be used to hack a basic land, right? Because 
if you look at the text on the basic land, it says tap to add, for example, mountain to your mana pool, right? And with Magical Hack, you can change that mountain into island or swamp into island. You get my jest? So you can use your Magical Hack to give your opponent, change the basic land of your opponent into an island, and then you can start attacking. Meaning, if you're playing with a full playset of Magical Hacks and a full playset of uh, Phantasmal Terrains, there's a pretty a big chance you're going to draw into one of them and you're going to give your opponent an island, which is super important for this deck, right? Because we also see a uh, pirate ship in this deck that has island home as well. We also see Sea Singer. Sea Singer, a great card from Fallen Empires. You know, it's like a control magic on a stick, but your opponent does need to have an island. So as soon as you've given it an island, those mag those Sea Singers become really, really strong. You know, it's really cool to see that uh, coming together here in this deck. Now we also see Merfolk Assassin together with War Barge. Now that's really an old school combination if I've ever seen one. You know, I remember back in the day, that was one of the first combos people kind of, you know, picked out. And you've got to remember, there was no internet, we only had to duelist. So you really had to tinker yourself. So War Barge is an artifact for four that reads, pay three, target creature gains Island Walk until end of turn, right? So you can give a creature Island Walk and then you can use your Merfolk Assassin because Merfolk Assassin is a Merfolk that simply says tap, destroy target creature that has Island Walk. So you give your opponent's creature Island Walk, kill it with the Assassin. I mean, it doesn't get cooler than that, right? And look at the art again on Merfolk Assassin, that ship kind of sinking in the background. I love it. I think it's super cool. You know, I love the flavor. Talking about flavor, he's also um, playing with the pirate, right? I mean, this card, Ramirez de Pietro, it's a 4-3 for too much mana, but it is such a boss and it belongs in a tournament like we are playing in today. I really think, Tommaso, for this matchup, even though I really like my deck, I think it's a cool deck, but you've brought the cooler deck here to the table. So props to you, my man. Anyway, this is the deck of Tommaso. Now let's take a look at my deck, Flying Elementals. And here we see my deck, Flying Elementals. And Flying Elementals is basically built around a very simple combo that you don't see that often you've got gravity sphere which is an enchant world that says all creatures lose flying now you've got this rule in magic with layering so the first layer is all creatures lose flying but then i can give creatures flying again and i want to do that with flying carpet so flying carpet a card from arabian nights you can use it to give target creature flying. So I'm going to give my big fat elementals like earth elemental and fire elemental flying and then fly over my opponent's uh, you know, creatures, because they all have lost flying. So basically, my Earth Elemental on Flying Carpet is now unblockable, right? That's that's a simple plan. I'm a simple man. And um, then I decide, why not also add El uh, Abara's Carpet into the deck as well? Because then I have all the carpets in Magic, in old school at least, as far as I know. And uh, El Abara's Carpet actually works together quite well with Gravity Sphere, because you can put yourself as a player on the carpet, and then creatures uh, without flying cannot deal damage to you anymore because it's very flavorful. You're high up on the carpet. They, they simply cannot reach you. I love that, that kind of simple, goofy flavor of the early days of magic. It makes sense. Um, it is very expensive to use, though. Five to cast, five to use. So it's not, like, great, but I love the idea. What I also really like here is the combination between Urza's Adventure and Gravity Sphere. So Urza's Adventure is six mana. Yeah, you heard that correct. Six mana. But it's a really cool creature. It's 4-4. Four, four. And for zero mana, and uh, I can give it an ability like Trample or First Strike, but I can also give it Flying. Now, every time you give it one of these abilities, it gets minus one, minus one. But remember, if I have Gravity Sphere on the table, nothing has Flying. I can give my Urza's Venture Flying and deal damage that way. Now, um, of course, I'm playing with other cards that fit together quite well with that theme, like Earthquake, for example. Um, I'm also playing with Falling Star because, yeah, it's just a fun card to play with. And I also have a Plan B in this deck. And the Plan B revolves around Sword of the Ages, a card from Legends. It's a 6 to cast, comes into play tapped. But when you untap it, you can tap it and you can sack an X amount of creatures and deal damage equal to their power added to any target, for example, your opponent. Now, the cool thing here is I can use my Sword of the Ages together with Wall of Fire to create like a fireball with Sword of the Ages and Wall of Fire, like a Wall of Fireball, I guess. I don't know how to call it, but it actually sounds funny, a Wall of Fireball. Um, so that's kind of like an alternative win con for me. Um, maybe a, a nice thing to note here is that another name for the deck is actually Carpet Ride, and Carpet Ride is this store that we have in the Netherlands that sells carpets. That is kind of this, this has-been store. It still exists, it still sells stuff, but it had its peak... Uh, in like 93, 94. So that's why it's um, 
The logo kind of looks like it's from the 90s, right? And it, it, yeah, it kind of fits the bill. So some people like jokingly call this the carpet ride deck. And I like that. You know, I like that idea that, you know, Fire Elemental and Earth Elemental together go go and do some shopping at the carpet ride store. And then they, they want to buy a carpet to fly on. You know, it makes sense. Anyway, uh, this is my deck. I think it's cool, but I have to say, like I said, I think Tommaso's deck, I mean, it rules, right? That deck is so cool. We're really looking forward to play against him in this matchup and see if we can just both do our, our little goofy things, you know, and uh, let's find out who's going to win this one. So it's uh, Boat Tribal versus Elementals. Well, Flying Elementals, I should say. Here we go. Game number one, here we go. So I'm sitting on the right with my Flying Carpet Elementals deck. Look at that hand. There's a Flying Carpet... There's a fire elemental. I've got a Felwer stone to ramp up, so that's quite nice. Let's have a look at Tommaso, what he has. Ooh, yeah, we see a lot of the good stuff. Wall of Water, we see Soul Ring turn one. That's good. A War Barge in there. Doesn't have anything to give me islands, though. That's definitely something that he's going to look for. Looks like Tommaso here on the play, starting with a basic island. Tapping the island. There we go. Turn one merchant ship. Yeah, I'm loving it, man. You see my uh, my box there here for Tommaso. I think it's uh, fantastic to see this card. Don't worry, I'm not playing with any lightning bolts. That kind of, would be kind of boring. So you don't have to worry. This merchant ship is going to survive. It cannot attack, though, because it has that stupid island home clause, which I think is kind of ridiculous, right? I mean, just don't give it that... Um, you know, that ability, that drawback, I should say. Anyway, there's the second island being played out by Tommaso. There's a soul ring passing the turn. So yeah, next turn he could go for that ghost ship that he's got in hand, tapping two red here. What am I going to do? There's that Felwer stone that I had in my opener. Going to pass turn. There is a swamp as well. <laughs> What he really needs here is a magical hack or a phantasmal terrain. You know, give me an island. Merchant ship. That would be that ideal. Still ringing. <laughs> Gonna tap a blue. Oh, we found a magical hack. Oh, <laughs> this is fantastic. Hey, and we've got more light. Oh, this is fantastic. So he's gonna make this into an island. So I'm just gonna flip the card to show that it's an island now. Now we can attack with the merchant ship. This is a first here on Timmy Talks. He's gaining two life from the merchant ship. What a guy. I think right now he's won the match, to be honest. Like, this is epic. If, if you get to do this, quite impressive. Here's a Hammerheim. So four mana in total. Still cannot uh, play out an Elemental because there are five to cast. I am going to tap four. I wonder what's going to come. There's a Flying Carpet. So I'm actually not doing that much. I mean, Tomasa is really making more impact here. And he can start attacking again. Like, he can gain another two lives. He can go up to 24. This is pretty cool. That looks fun right there. There's a second swamp. So, yeah, this is this is awesome, right? There's another attack. Wow. He's up to 26 now, I believe. That is really cool. There's the ghost ship we saw in his opener as well. So, I mean, he's doing quite well. Or he's on 24. He's probably 24, right? That was his second attack. I shouldn't uh, exaggerate. But here's a strip mine. Could strip my own island. But I probably have better stuff to do. Yep, there's the fire elemental. But if Tomaso can now find maybe a third blue to regenerate the ghost ship. Or, of course, a sea singer. If he gets like a sea singer, he could cast it and then next turn steal my fire elemental because I have that island. That would be pretty cool. Yes. That would basically force me to use my strip mine on my own land. Does he have a phantasmal terrain? Is he going to tap two and give me another one? He's going to attack for two first. Going to drop to 18. Going to tap three. There's a wall of water. Okay, so the wall of water unfortunately only has five toughness. So it is going to die to the fire elemental. So I wonder if I'm going to attack here. Kind of makes sense. Going through my hand. Looks like I'm a little bit in the tank. <laughs> he always says that whenever he gets a desert twister. Let's see what I'm going to do. Sorting my lance out. That can sometimes give information as well as to what what a player has in hand, by the way. Oh, there's just a pass. 
Just a past turn. Are we going to see some instant shenanigans? I wonder why I didn't attack with the fire elemental because, you know, he didn't really have a good block for that. And yes, then he could have attacked with the merchant ship, but who cares? Uh, oh, look at this. Oh, Ramirez de Pietro. And this is ideal because it's a 4 3 first striker. So that can deal with the fire elemental, which is a 5 4. So it's actually quite a good card on this board. And I'm a little bit surprised here that Tommaso is not attacking with the ghost ship. Isn't she like a vanilla 4 4? Ah, uh, that's because of my flying carpet, of course. It could give my uh, fire elemental flying. Yeah, that's why. Okay, so it's a good call here for Tommaso not to attack. And I'm going to tap four here. There's a jam they told. Okay, so I've got some card draw going, but I am giving an opening to Tommaso to at least attack with this flyer here. Although flying carpet is two to use. Yeah, it's only two to use, so he still cannot really attack with that. Does have regeneration now open with the third island. Tapping four. What are we going to see for four? There's a war barge. Oh, this war barge is good. It can start giving his creatures island walk. And I've got an island. Oh, this is nice. And I believe it's got enough mana to use it as well. Right? War barge. The thing is, these cards, I don't see them often. But I bought war barges three to use. So then he can use the war barge. Ah, this is unfortunate. This maze of if. He needs a phantasmal terrain to kind of numb the maze. But next turn, he can give island walk to multiple creatures with the war barge. And, uh, you know, he can start dealing some damage. Which is really nice. I mean, I've got one me, so I can send one thing back, but... Yeah, who cares? But maybe he wants to keep his... Um, oh, look at that. He's going to attack. Waiting for me to declare blocks, and then he's going to give them Island Walk, probably. I wonder if that works. We'll see. Because I think that is his strategy. So, I mean, obviously, I don't want to block the Ramirez because it's, it's a 4 3 first striker. So, I guess I could give it flying and block the ghost ship. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm doing. So, I'm giving it flying. I'm going to block the ghost ship. And going to send back the Ramita. So he's going to gain two more lives from the ship. I love it. Yeah, here we see him using the island walk. So it can no longer be blocked. And then I take two, go to 16. I wonder if it works this way. The war barge. Let me know in the comments below. If it does, it's pretty cool. He's got an but because blockers are already declared, I wonder if, that, if you can still do that. Even after then again, I'm sure Tommaso knows what he's doing. I mean, he's been playing this deck the whole day. So anyway, drawing a card here on the end step. But I mean, I'm on 16. Uh, Tommaso's on 26. He's doing a great job here. The problem for me is I've only got that one creature to fire elemental. So I need some more firepower. And just passing the turn here, okay. It's gonna draw for turn. I mean, do remember, I also have the Disharmony, I believe, in hand still. I had that in my opener, so I can maybe use Disharmony here. He's gonna attack with three creatures again. Grabbing my hand, my hand here, going uh, to look for that card, probably. Disharmony, one red and two, a card from Legends. And then I can take control of target attacking creature, untap it. Look at that, I'm not doing it at all. Taking the damage. 28. Does that mean, because I'm doing this, does that mean that I have a mirror universe in hand? Perhaps thinking about trading lives. That's the only explanation I can think of for not playing the Disharmony here. Disharmony could have done a great job. So passing your turn back to me, I'm on 10. I didn't even draw a card. That's really a missed opportunity, by the way. Forgot that with my gem datum. Should have drawn an extra card. Didn't do it. Am I gonna tap six here for the mirror universe? And then I have to hope it's not getting countered or sticks to the board. 
So quiet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> tapping six. There I go. There is the mirror universe. Actually, it doesn't come into play tap, but you can only use it during your upkeep. So I'm mixing it up with Sword of the Ages. Sword of the Ages comes into play tapped. Does mirror enter tapped? Yes. And then during your upkeep, right? You can no, no, There's no, an tap. other island. Yeah, I'm tapping it here, realizing my mistake. So the thing is with, with mirror universe, you can only use it during your upkeep. And I kind of like that clause because it means you also have to make the decision before you draw the card. That's always what I find so interesting about the upkeep triggers you know you have to make all these decisions before you know what you're going to draw i find that more interesting to be honest than those triggers that you see these days during your uh, your main phase and here we see okay these are, this is drowned the one one zombie pirates for one black you can regenerate it i love how ghost ship and drown kind of matches together right you can see that drown the guys in, in the drowned art or the crew for the ghost ship and now I'm going to take uh, one extra point of uh, damage from Mana Burn because we're playing Atlantic. Here I'm going to trade lives. Oh, this is disastrous. This is disastrous. Poor Tommaso. Now all of a sudden he's on nine. That is a problem for him. He was doing so well. Another maze, yeah. Another maze of if. To protect me here. And it looks like I've got the control now of the game. The question is, how can I deal damage though? He still has that regeneration flyer, so gonna tap five, perhaps another elemental. Ooh, look at that, gonna attack his life though. He's gonna drop to five with the pyrotechnics. Yeah, 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 yeah. Does that mean that I have more burn? That I'm playing it directly on his life total? So for Tommaso, this is risky. I mean, I have to have more burn in hand, right? Or else I wouldn't play it directly on his life total, or I have, an, I have a way to get rid of the ghost ship. I am playing with fishers, and fishers buries a creature, meaning you cannot regenerate it. So I could play a fisher, perhaps on the ship, give my fire elemental flying, and then put him down to zero. That could be a line. Now he's gonna attack again. So he's, uh, he's once again gonna do the trick here with waiting for me to to announce blockers and then give things island walk. Oh, that merchant ship is so gorgeous. I love it. And look at that, gonna send back the merchant ship because I don't want him to gain any life. And maybe we were checking, like, is it then considered unblocked? I don't think it is. He's not gaining the life. So that's probably why I picked up the card to read it. He's gonna give it island walk here. So I'm gonna take two from the ship and one from Drown, so take three damage in total, dropping to 25, so from 28 to 25, that's yeah, not really a problem for me. I do think that the, I do think it's a good attack, right? It's it's better than nothing, although now I can attack next turn with the Fire Element to give it flying, or does he have a way to deal with it? There's a Merfolk Assassin, oh. Yeah, this is unfortunate. I think he shouldn't have attacked here with the Ghost Ship. Really needed it here as a blocker because now, yeah, I mean, I'm kind of <laughs> asking Tommaso maybe he can tap a little bit more clear for me to see the difference. Uh, I mean, you can see it, you know, you can see it, but yeah, you know, I want to be absolutely sure before I go in for lethal. So attacking here for five on the flying carpet, that's it. And yeah, pointing out here that Mirror Universe was really the big game changer. Because Tommaso actually did a really good job. He was on 28 at a certain point. I was on 10. You know, but then at Mirror Universe uh, came to the board. And uh, that's when all the problems started. But remember, this is just game number one. So we are going to dive into our sideboards. And we will catch back up with you in game number two. Game number two. Here we go. So I'm one game up. That means that Tommaso is on the play. Here we see my opener. Again, a Felber Stone and a Soul Ring. Ooh, that's a lot of ramp. So it's going to be a quick opener for me. Also, a soul ring here, it seems, for Tommaso. 
So looking at his hand, the first question for him is, is he going to keep? I'm quite sure I'm going to keep with that quick uh, opening. Soaring, drown some lands. I mean, is there blue mana though? I'm not sure if there's blue mana. I saw an Urborg in a swamp. Not sure if it's on island in there, but it was hard to see. I'm sure we'll find out soon enough. Opening with the swamp into a soaring in the pass. There is also a soaring here from my part, probably right. Factory soaring, tapping the soaring. Now we're going to see that Felwer Stone. So very explosive opener. I'm a little surprised I didn't start with the mountain because then I have done mountain soaring Felwer. And if I didn't draw a mountain from the top, I could cast that Earth Elemental. Here's the City of Brass. This is really good for Tommaso. So probably got this from the top, meaning he's got blue mana now. There's Drown, the 1 1 creature from the dark with regeneration. Beautiful art. Really like that card. I wish it was a zombie too. Or is, is it actually a zombie? Let me know in the comments. I can't remember. I remember trying to figure it out once. Anyway, attacking with the 2-2. Two, two. two points of damage here for Tommaso. So he's dropping to 17, of course, after taking one hit from his own City of Brass. There's another city. So he could go here for the counter-attack, put me on 19. Probably wants to keep it as a blocker, though, for the factory. Yeah, and this is always annoying when you have so many City of Brasses. You start really hurting yourself more and more. Okay, there's an Energy Flux from the sideboard. This is quite good, this Energy Flux. So Energy Flux, a card from Antiquities, during your upkeep, you have to pay two for each artifact or else they're destroyed. So they all get an upkeep cost of two, basically. So it can tap the... Soul Ring to pay for itself, I guess. Keep it around until I can find a way to get rid of the Energy Flux. But, yeah, and I'm thinking, now, am I going to use the mana to animate the factory? But I shouldn't because then I also have to pay two for my factory. So deciding not to. There's another Mountain. Tapping three. There's a Wall of Fire. Okay, at least I can stop the Drowned something. But it's not really something to worry about if you're Tommaso. So he's going to untap and has got to pay, of course, for his own Soul Ring. Probably just exactly. Soul Ring is probably just going to pay for itself. Yeah, but his Energy Flux really changes uh, the game. It slows me down, at least. I think this was a really good sideboard card here for Tommaso to play. Also, I've got more artifacts, of course, with Flying Carpet and the Gem Day Tome, so it makes sense. There's a Magical Hack. Here we go. Changing my mountain here into an island. Of course, the downside of using Magical Heck over Phantasmal Terrain is that you cannot change cards uh, like the Mishra's Factory, for example, or the Maze of It for the Loa. And of course, in this deck, Tommaso is playing a full playset of Phantasmal Terrains and a full playset of Magical Hacks. There's the Hammerheim and passing the turn. And Tommaso's still very low uh, low on lands here. I think that's his biggest concern at the moment. At least there's not a lot of pressure coming from my side of the board, so that helps. Gonna tap two blue here. Look at that. Gonna drop to 13. But wow, there's this Sea Singer. And he can use the Sea Singer because I have an island. We can start stealing my Wall of Fire. That would be funny. So paying for my own Soul Ring. There is a Maze of If, okay. But no solution to the Sea Singer. Tap the blue mana. Making it into a 2 2, of course, an attack here because uh, Tommaso doesn't have a black mana open to regenerate the Drowned. Passing the turn here. And I mean, he can start using the, the Sea Singer. And now I'm wondering, does it work on non-wall creatures only? Well, we're going to find out. He's going to use the Sea Singer. Yeah, he's going to steal the Wall of Fire. Love it. Oh, that's so cool. And remember, at any time, well, at any time, but during his untap phase, he can decide to untap the Sea Singer, and then I get control from, uh, of the Wall of Fire again. And then he can, of course, choose another target. So if I play out another creature, he's going to use that. Here we've got the Merchant Ship again. Oh, this is quite nice. Loving this board state here. Passing the turn to me. And I had that spectacular opener, right? With uh, with Soaring and Felwerstone. But that got ruined by the Energy Flux. 
And this game is really different than how I expected it to be. There's the Earth Elemental, but I mean, he can steal the Earth Elemental. Look at that, yeah, realizing it, taking it back. <laughs> oh, man. Like putting it on the board, like, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, and Tomasa was really cool about it, and uh, yeah. He's putting it on the board, like, wait a minute, he can just untap. It's not like a preacher. The Sea Singer is better than a preacher in that regard. The only problem with Sea Singer is, of course, that your opponent needs to have an island. I mean, it would see a lot more play if that wasn't, uh, wasn't the case. So it looks like we're kind of in a standstill here. I think if you're Tommaso, what you would really want to have here is Phantasmal Terrain on the maze. And then maybe a flying creature like a, like a ghost ship to start dealing damage. Ooh, there's a Fisher probably on end step here on the Sea Singer. Yeah, that was much needed for me at least to continue with doing what I want to do. And the problem here for Tommaso is he, he's already on 10. He took so much damage from his own City of Brasses that, that the few times I could attack with the factory. And I mean, his, his, his life total is already halved. And now I'm probably going to drop the big creature. There's the Earth Elemental. He does, of course, have to drown to block. But that means next turn I can attack with, uh, with two factories and the Earth Elemental. That could really hurt. And being already on 10, that could be a big problem for Tommaso. So he needs something uh, this turn. The question is, does he have it? Yeah, good. He's going to draw for turn here. He's going to tap. Take a damage. Go down to nine. There's another Sea Singer. Okay, that's pretty cool. That is not too bad. He can probably survive one more turn, then start using the Sea Singer. That's going to be really important. Like, can he use that Sea Singer? To stay alive. And I can tell you that it was a lot of fun to play this day two tournament, Lions Day. It was so flavorful. There were so many cool decks. This is just one of the many really cool matches we've had. There's another Fisher though. Taking care of the Sea Singer, yeah, and it's 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 looking really bad now for. Ooh, okay, 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 okay. I won't say it's looking really bad now for Tommaso, but hey, this kind of helps. Destroying the Earth Elemental, another card from the sideboard. And of course, uh, I don't have the mana anymore to also attack with the factories because I mean Fisher is a really good card because of instant speed, but it's five to cast though, so it comes with a hefty price. But Tommaso is still with his uh, back against the wall. He's on eight. Next turn, I can animate my factories, perhaps start chipping in. <laughs> gonna tap the blue, tap the black. What are we gonna see? Ooh, another drowned. Nice. That does the trick. Problem here is, of course, that he does uh, have to use the City of Brasses if I attack. So then he's still going to take some damage. And when you're on 8, every point of damage counts. Here you see me draw for turn. There's another mountain. A little bit stuck, man. Mm -hmm. um... So let's see what I can do. Am I just simply going to swing in? Ooh, it looks like I'm not. Perhaps I've got better options. Tapping 4. Play something. There's a flying carpet, but I mean, I've got to pay for the carpet, though. Oh, I, got a plan now. I can start using the carpet, but yeah, I've got to pay for it as, as well. <laughs> I wonder what I'm going to do next turn. Perhaps I'm going to allow my soul ring to go and pay the two mana from the soul ring on the flying carpet. Keep the flying carpet around, and then I have enough mana to use my carpet and attack with the flying factory. Make it a 3-3 with the other factory. That could be a line I can follow, and then I can put him on 5. Let's first see what Tommaso can do here on his turn. Ace, of course, a game down. Needs to win this. I kind of want, want him to win this game, because his deck is so cool. 
Yeah, they're using the soaring here to pay for the flying carpet. Okay, soaring gone. Yeah, and I think I'm gonna do what I just described, you know, giving, animating my factory, giving it flying with the carpet, making it a 3-3. Or not, gonna tap five. Oh, there's a fire elemental. So probably got that from the top deck and that kind of changed my entire plan. So I got the fire elemental. That means next turn, I can pay two for it. Give my flying elemental flying and deal an extra five. There's another island here for, uh, for Tommaso. He really needs a ghost ship. A ghost ship would be great for him. Haven't been able to use, uh, to show you guys my gravity sphere, by the way. That's the whole idea of the deck, gravity sphere and flying carpet. Yeah, and Tommaso really trying to, to find a way out. I mean, two cards in hand there for him. It's going to be tricky passing the turn to me. So I'm going to pay two, of course, for the carpet. I'm going to draw for turn three cards in hand for me. Now I can start using the carpet. Yeah, here, put the fire elemental on the carpet and attack for five. Going to put him on three. Oh, he's one turn away from losing the game, losing the match. But he's done so much epic stuff, like seeing those sea singers in action. That was really sweet, and of course the uh, the merchant ship was uh, amazing, and the magical hex, and basically this whole deck. I love this whole deck. But hey, he's not dead yet. He's on three. If he can find a way to, you know, get rid of the fire elemental, well, actually, if he can find a way to get rid of the flying carpet, that would be the most important part here. No, that's it. Ah, oh, too bad, too bad, too bad, too bad, too bad. Okay, so winning here, but. I wish we could have seen more of your deck, but uh, it's been a pleasure to play against you, Tommaso. And uh, let's take a look, another look at this beautiful deck here. It's a quite amazing, all black bordered, by the way. And um, my deck is also all black bordered. It's all foreign black bordered. I thought it was fun to bring that uh, to a tournament here in Italy. It's, it's full of Italian cards. Most of them are Italian cards, actually. Anyway, thank you so much for the game, Tommaso. And like I said, day two, the Lions day was a lot of fun. And next week, I, I have the finals of day two for you. So you're going to see more flavor decks going face to face. But that is next week. If you want to make sure you don't miss that, please hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. And talking about stuff like that, before you go, please take a moment to like, share and comment on this video. All these uh, things are free and really help the channel move forward. And talking about moving forward, you can also become a patron of the show. Check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks to find out how you can become a patron. And if you become a patron at the tier level two, your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video. What end scroll? This end scroll.